Welcome back to the Print Shift Assembly, a Prusa Mini with a conveyor belt fed for part ejection. This is the second video and it's literally just assembling a stock Prusa Mini. The fact that the bed has some cool add-ons doesn't change the assembly at all. For tools, you do not need the included wrench right now, and while the Prusa includes a 2.5mm hex key, I prefer to use my own ball end 2.5mm hex. Ball end means that it can be used at an angle. I've got my old Ford spanner here for intimidation only. The only parts you actually need are four screws, all two point, or all three millimeter hex screws. Do you get some zip ties included as well? Here's the LCD. And I use the assembly manual. I've not memorized the assembly process yet. I don't have any Haribo gummy bears. I have small children, so I'm using marshmallows instead. I'm pretty sure they'll work okay. All right, what do we got? Once again, this video will be uncut. However, I will speed up some of the segments so that it doesn't become boring. The first step is to put the foam rubber feet on. We already did that in part one for the bed assembly so we wouldn't hurt the Y motor wire. Next up is opening up the electronics case and installing the LCD cable. And the next step is joining the XZ assembly to the base. You need a 40 millimeter screw and a 20 millimeter screw for the first chunk. Get those guys in. And then you'll be screwing in from the top with, I believe, a 12 millimeter screw. None of these screws should be put in tight as you're going to have to slide it into position before you're done. And slide the XZ arm into place. Tighten up all your screws. And the printer looks like a printer. Gummy bear time. Finally. We're getting close to done too. Next up is the LCD mounting. It's just a single screw up in the front. The LCD angle doesn't matter except for using the print. This guy is going to live on a shelf so I'm going to face him more up. There's probably a step where you're supposed to do this. But there's a nice little hole that just beg it to put one of these in, so I'm going to do that now. So you can sort of jam the cable into the channel, I would say. Velcro ties. But basically, instead of zip ties, you get something that's easy to put on and off again. Pretty sure this one's a. Printer back on its feet. We're going to plug in some more stuff. I do explain everything in the manual, but it's just kind of. There's one hole that this can go in. And guess what? It goes in that hole. You can see Prusa's buddy board. Not a lot of spare pins, and not a lot of documentation on it yet. So this heater. And through Mister. These guys are coming in through the top of the box. There's no cable routing to do. Well, and I'm just making sure everything else is tight and tidy. I do have the filament sensor. Insert him as well. There's one more port. So go in that port. Piece of filament to make sure that it signs nice. The cable's going to have to come in from this direction. So basically, there's only one hole right up here. I'm going to cover it back up for you. We want to make sure that the printer is able to do good test prints before we do any print shift activity. So you have two channels for your cables to go out the back and one out the front. 
but having good cable management is worth the uh, extra fuss. Done 3D printers for quite a while, and the guaranteed killer is a uh, bad strain relief on your cables. This way, all your cables have nice bends, the nice wrap. They will last a good bit longer. Still probably get cables that die eventually, because you're moving them back and forth, but doing about the best I can. Oh, more gummy bears. <laughs> Okay. Spool holder. I'm just going to skip that for now. Connect the power supply. You're done with the assembly. And I'm going to power it up. Let's see. If I've done anything horribly wrong. And we'll try to start a test print right now. So you can tell that despite the changes we've made to the bed, it's just a Prusa. Just a Prusa Mini. Switch for my bench supplies so I can do experimental electronics here. Not that I do that. But, yeah. Uh, where would I try and PLA? Right here. Mm. These are a little old school, but I just don't want to spend the time to build the filament spool holder. I really don't like having the filament on the desk. It's just too easy for it to get knocked off or messed with. Alright, I may get the English. Set a wizard. Self test. Always oh, clip your filament before you, uh. We'll skip through bits of this, but I just, you know, for posterity's sake. Did I break it yet? Ooh, it's getting toasty. Get my coffee. Nope. Oh, apparently, we only heat to 60. All tests are successful. I'm going to load PLA for first layer calibration. So Prusa uses a induction sensor, um, the Pinda or is this the Minda probe. Basically, it can only sense metal. It will not actually sense this plastic, so the plastic won't adjust the height. It's only learning where this bed is, so why it's important to have your steel sheet on there. We're going to need to adjust it because this plastic does have a thickness. It will almost certainly be wrong. We'll cool down to 170 to do the probing. Now we're heating back up to 215 to do the uh, drawing. We're getting better stitching, better. Now we're pretty good. It's actually at the lower from the factory settings, which I assumed it would be calibrated more closely, but I guess they want to make sure that it's calibrated above. You get this whole trace to do your adjustment, so 
and in theory because it did the probing before. Yeah, like that. Oh, we're good. We're calibrated. Grab our USB stick. Hopefully they put a test print on here. Test print. Test print. Sneak this guy back up here. Guys, we're definitely gonna speed up the test print. But there you go. Construction of the Prusa. This is what, maybe a half hour, if that. Construction, calibration, and test print. Next video, we're gonna hook up the motor, show you how we operate that, and then I think we'll probably do another video for um, setting up your G code. Maybe we'll do that as part of the next guy. It's not really a video kind of thing, it's just use the start G code. <sighs> Maker gear. <laughs> First, the hot end I got was from these guys back in the day when it was all clay. Good stuff. The printers are still really nice. It's also sad on the uh, um, regular LCD, on your standard printer. Just spinning the knob makes her go faster. I wonder if there's a shortcut or something. But you can change the speed. A buck and a quarter. Uh, this way it's just doing the first layer real slow though, so I'll turn it back down. This is the file that Prusa ships with the printers, so. Presumably slide with a Prusa slicer on relatively conservative settings. They want to make sure that it works the first time you use it, obviously. Bed is working out nicely. We have a little ripple on the edges. You see that? That's because we haven't done any barbecue rolling. And I could actually break the print right now by start turning the knob. Not really a knob, but kind of silly to do so.
looks pretty good. Very hollow. But she works. Is there another test print on here for uh no, I, I always forget that this isn't a touch screen. I'm gonna print the screw now. I'm not gonna record it because I wanna get this video out, so. Wait for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, the belt. It works. We'll get that wired up. <laughs> 